Well, good afternoon. Uh, thank you all for being here today. I greatly appreciate it. Um, we're here today to celebrate a great career and have some great times, uh, relive a few old memories. Uh, I want to thank Bruce Ludlow from the Southland Conference for being here, uh, many of you else who are here. Um, but I want to give an introduction to our head baseball coach, Jim Gilligan. He's one of 18 coaches in the history of the NCAA to reach 1,300 wins. He has 12 conference championships, 12 NCAA regional title tournament appearances, six times he's been league coach of the year. He's a Southland Conference Hall of Honor member. When the Southland Conference had their 50th anniversary, they released all-decade teams. Jim was on four of the five all-decade teams. The only reason he wasn't on the fifth because we weren't in the conference. Uh, one as a player, three as a coach. He's had 140 all-conference selections, 79 major league draftees, four All-Americans, and six major league players. He's coached four SLC hitters of the year, nine SLC pitchers of the year, and one SLC player of the year. Gilligan graduated from Lamar University in 1969 and has been recognized as a distinguished alumnus by the university. His lovely wife, Laverne, who is here with us today, has been with him by his side all the time. So without further ado, I want to introduce our head baseball coach at Lamar University, Mr. Jim Gilligan. Thank you. Thank you. Wow. Well, thanks for coming. This is a, a little bit awkward. Uh, in the respect that uh, normally when you announce that you're going to retire, uh, you're gone the next day. Uh, but I've got nine months left, so um, Ken Evans probably had the best recommendation, and Jason sort of indicated this. Uh, he said, let's celebrate it, and that's what I want to do. Um, I've already told my ballplayers here, I've already told them about it, and I've told our alumni at our golf alumni event uh, so now telling the media is, uh, is the last step of this. And then, uh, you know, it's time to get to work and, uh, and try to make this the best year I've ever had. Uh, usually at these things, you, you try to thank everybody that's been important to you. But since I have nine months left, I don't want to thank anybody that I might feel like choking nine months from now. So, uh, so I'm going to save some of those. But uh, one guy that couldn't make it here today was David Burns, and I wouldn't be here without David because I had already uh, left Lamar. This was in 1986. Uh, went to Salt Lake City to be a pitching coach. The next year I managed that ball club. And, uh, and then David and I did a player agency and we, uh, we helped start the Taiwan Professional Baseball League and we had a lot of fun with that. And then uh, he helped Dan Richards get elected and um, it was time for him to uh, go to work in politics and uh, he, he thought it would be a good time for me to come back to Lamar. He says, this we'll do this for a few years, uh, and then we'll get back into what we're doing. And 23 years later, I'm still waiting for that phone call from Burnson. So, uh, so David, I couldn't wait on you. Uh, you know, it's, it's, time. it's time for someone else. Uh, you know, and we have capable people working in our program right now uh, that could, you know, take this program and not skip a beat. Uh, and I know you guys are going to have questions about, you know, what the process is going to be, but that is in the hands of Jason. Um, one of the things I've, there's a couple of times when I've been uh, offered and, and uh, some people have wanted me to be an AD here, and I wouldn't take your job for any money in the world. It's too much work. Uh, but when you do hire an AD, uh, that's his job. The, the worst decisions we've ever made at this university on coaches are when non-athletic people were making the call on it. So uh, you put it into the hand of athletic people and, and they'll make good decisions. And, I, and like I said, we have good human resources right here with Jimmy and Scotty. Um, but uh, you know, it's gonna be a, a national type thing or maybe it's an interim type thing. I'm not trying to say anything to you, but, uh, but Jason, I'm sure we'll make a good decision on that. But I have truly enjoyed uh, the opportunity that I've had here at Lamar and I've had the opportunity uh, even on our promotion, you know, whoever you get in here, uh, Jason, whoever takes the job, you've got to understand how important fundraising and promotion is to this program. Um, every coach at this level, you know, a Southland or a Sunbelt level, if they're not doing something to promote their program, they're not doing what they need to do to be a, to be a head coach. So. Um, 
a lot of my time has been spent doing that. Laverne has sold more billboards, sold more banquet tables than any wife in the history of athletics, uh, and made more cookies. And uh, so, uh, in fact, I got to tell you a good story. Uh, I was. I was in Houston. We had Sparky Anderson in here for a banquet. Sparky, uh, at the time, I think was the first guy to win world championships in both leagues. And he came in for uh, a banquet. And uh, I got really close with him and shared a lot of knowledge that I learned with Al Vince, and he was a fan of Al. And about three weeks later, I went down to uh, the Major League Winter Meetings. I took Al down there, and I'm walking through the lobby, and there's Sparky Anderson, Yogi Berra, and Billy Martin. And uh, he says, Jim, come on over here. And, and he's introduced me to these guys who I've admired my whole life. And he said, instead of this guy's a great pitching guy, this guy he says, this guy's wife makes the best chocolate chip cookies, <laughs> which put everything in perspective. You know, you can't get too full of yourself. And, uh, but I'm, I'm, I've had the opportunity to meet a lot of my childhood heroes uh, and, and get to know them on a personal level. Uh, and, and again, Al Vincent, if I didn't mention Al, if, if you don't like what I did, then blame Al because most of it came from him. He was the greatest baseball man that I've ever known. And I'm glad his name is on top of that field. So uh, right now, uh, I'd rather turn it over to questions. Coach, what was the determining factor to make you decide now is the time? Well, um, I'm going to be 69 next month. and. Uh, and I, while I feel healthy, uh, I don't feel as vibrant as I used to. Uh, so it's hard to sprint unless, you know, once you see, when you see a finish line, uh, then it's pretty, pretty easy to run as hard as you can. So uh, that's probably, uh, it's time. You know, I've coached here for six decades. I, I coached in the 60s. So enough's enough. You know, if I go seven decades, I'll feel old. So, uh, what are you going to miss about it? Uh, well, what I'm going to miss, uh, I'm going to try to continue to do, and that's the working with uh, players. Uh, I don't enjoy the competition as much as I, I like watching uh, the development of players. So, um, I can still, I, I don't have plans yet on what I'm going to do as far as that, but I'm sure I'll do something, whether it's in the way of camps or. I don't know. Uh, nothing on the table right now. But, uh, you know, it's, it's the type of thing like when Al Vincent uh, quit after 42 years of uh, professional baseball, he came out and gave me about 14 years. So uh, maybe I'll do 14 years for somebody else. I know 38 years is hard to really nail down in one or two moments, but if you could, what are maybe a couple of the highlights of your coaching career here at Lamar? I tell you, Harold, there's, uh, you actually answered your own question. <laughs> when you said that, because uh, I would be sliding uh, several teams if I ever narrowed it down. Um, but, uh, you know, I, I, there's, there's just so many great players that have come through here. And the thing about it is, it's guys that were undrafted coming in. You know, you think about a guy like Kevin Moore. And uh, it would take Kevin 15 minutes to run out of this room, uh, and he got what, eight, eight years in big leagues and a World Series ring, and he's got his own TV show right now. And I think he is the typical Lamar good player that in spite of what a lot of scouts think, he proves them wrong. So uh, we've had so many of them. I don't want to slight any one of them by zeroing in on any more. What did you enjoy about coaching college baseball? Maybe. I well, to go maybe the pros or something like that. Yeah, I tell you, I, I like baseball's baseball. And, uh, you know, getting back to Sparky, I, I remember I kept on saying when I was talking to him, you know, at our level, Sparky, and I said it about three or four times, and finally he stopped me. He said, listen, he says, baseball's baseball. It doesn't matter what level you're coaching at, whether it's little league to the big leagues, there's only one way to do it, and that's to do it right. So, uh, so I've always been in pursuit of learning how to do it right. And, uh, I think if I'm going to credit myself with anything, it's, it's going to be uh, picking the brains of every one of those guys that I thought had something to give me. And uh, I think I've done a good job of getting knowledge that I didn't have and, and retaining it. And, uh, you know, so that's where I'm going with that, Big Dave. <laughs>
what's it been like for you, Coach? You played here too. Do you ever imagine you coach here this long at the school that you played baseball at? Well, if I didn't play here, I don't think I would have gotten back into coaching. Uh, because I don't think I would have taken another job. I was working in the radio business, I don't know if you knew that, down in Houston. I was working for uh, KLOL and KRLY Radio, and I took uh, about a $60,000 cut in pay to take this job. Uh, I don't think I would have done that for uh, LSU or anybody else, but I had played here, and uh, this was a family. And, uh, you know, when I, when I got the job, it's going to be a lot different than this time around. When I got the job, J.B. Higgins, called me up and t he told me I got $8,400 and, and, and I need a baseball coach. I said, okay, that sounds like a lot of money for coaching baseball, let's go. And he told me when I got the job, he said, listen, I've had a lot of guys tell me that if I give them this amount of money, they can build a program here. I don't have that kind of money. Can you build a program? I said, yeah. And uh, that was fun. What's been the secret behind your success? Players? Well, teaching players and players. Uh, Al told me the first year that I coached, uh, I was trying to get an evaluation from Al, who I trusted so much. And I just had a game where I think I squeezed home three runs and about five hitting runs and, you know, one little lefty-righty on the pitching staff. And I said, Al, is there anything, uh, you know, that you noticed? And he said, listen, you're a good teacher. He says, uh, in baseball, you'll lose more games managing then you will winning them. It's about teaching guys how to run, how to throw, how to hit, how to field, and then get out of the way. So that's that was the greatest advice that I had, and I try to stick to that. Uh, I know some pl sometimes players think that you crowd them a little bit, but uh, uh, I try not to. How's it been able to last coaching this long, 38, 39 years at Lamar? I'm already well, able to do that. Uh, you know, it's sports system. It starts at home. Uh, you, you have a wife that uh, tolerates all the time it takes to be a coach. All our, my coaches know what that's about. They have good coaching wives too. And uh, so it starts there. Uh, but it starts, uh, the, other, the other place that is important is to have support from your community. And I've had that through my entire career. Still have it. We did a tournament down in uh, Kingwood. You were playing at it. Uh, you know, 180 type players in Houston, not, not going down a street, and uh, shows the support. And you look at the billboards, they're always full out there. And uh, most of the time, people are getting online to get them. And, uh, you know, it's, uh, I've got a never say no list. I got, I got like about 40 guys in this town. It doesn't matter what I ask, they say yes. So I never say no. So uh, that has been important, and uh, you got to have that. Uh, so that's the advantage of having an old guy around. You have a lot of friends, you've, you've known people for a long time, and they can't, you know, they, they can't tell you no, so that's helped. You talk about, uh, you know, kids that went on to play pro ball, but you've had several of your former players become coaches, do extremely well in the business world as well. What's that mean because as professionals, non-baseball, they, they're productive? Well, it's, uh, and, you know, you, of course, you, you, start, you start out being proud of what guys do in baseball, but it goes much further. You know, David, uh, you know, becomes a Texas State Senator, the Department of Transportation. Uh, we've got several attorneys, several engineers. Um, had a guy flying from Vegas who was on my first team. His name was Terry Ono when I was out at Western New Mexico University. And he just sold his business for $45 million. Uh, I felt real good about that. And uh, had another guy here in town, Owen Meyer, just uh, teamed up with a guy here in town. They just sold to United Rentals for very large sum. Casey Smart just built him a seven million dollar home down there at Carlton Woods and living across the fairway from one of the Astro managers and and so the stories go on and on and you take you know you take pride in all the success that your players have whether it's on or off the field and uh, we just we have uh, and we have an alumni association now which uh, is uh, starting to give back uh, to the university so uh, that's what it's about, and you know, just love all those associations. I'm proud of everybody. And I'm sure we have guys sitting in this room right now that one of these days is, uh, you know, you're going to be one of those stories. Hopefully, you'll think that we had a part of it. Coach, still so another year left coaching. What's it going to be like for you, knowing just counting down the games? Well, uh, again, you know, I'm going to. Uh, 
Uh, I don't know if they're going to want to play for me this year uh, because I don't care if they like me or not. I'm going to give them a game. So, uh, so you know, that's what it is. Again, you can you can sort of you know get the enthusiasm up because you know you've you know you've only got nine months of it, and really you only. Uh, three of those months are of a competitive nature, and most of it is stuff that you're going to really enjoy. And we're going to leave here, we're going out on the baseball field, and we're going to have a great practice today, and I look forward to that. Uh, we'll compete against Rice in the fall. I love competing uh, against Wayne Graham, a uh, great coach. And, uh, you know, so the fall is going to be a breeze, uh, and then we start and we open up with a good ball club, and then we have a little club by the name of Arizona coming in. The, LSU, uh, Maneri did me a favor. He's coming to town. And I told him it was going to be my last year, so I appreciate yeah. that. But So uh, I'm going to have a lot of fun with it, but uh, do not, not run hard to first base. Or the other bases, for that matter, because uh, you might hear a screech coming out of the dugout. Any more questions? All right, Coach. Uh,